So I've been using DaVinci Resolve for around seven years now, and I've done a wide range of work inside of the software from VFX to motion graphics, to weddings, to real estate, to cars, to travel, a little bit of everything. And I have a pretty good understanding of DaVinci Resolve. And in those seven years, I've spent a lot of time trying to speed up my workflow and find little life hacks inside of DaVinci Resolve to make my editing workflow faster. But I also realized that a lot of you guys have probably found ways to save time in DaVinci Resolve. So drop what you think is the best way to save time down below in the comments and I will pin what I think is the best answer. And make sure you stick around for the end because I've got some that are just gonna make DaVinci Resolve run faster and not have issues, which in the end is gonna save you a ton of time. Let's get into the video. This one I didn't actually start using until the spring of 2025, but it's probably actually saved me the most amount of time. So make sure that you listen close. I found that I was doing repeat projects over and over again, meaning that I pretty much had a project that was identical. Again, I said that I film real estate now, so there's some videos that are very repeatable, uh, just of different properties. So I'm gonna be using the same color grade, the same audio effects, the same type of music, sound effects, the same number of layers, and maybe the bins. And obviously there's some flexibility in it, but there's a lot of repeat steps that I just wanted to get rid of. To create a project template, I would just create a project as I normally would. I would then create my timeline, I'd maybe customize it, change the resolution and the frame rate to something that I'd be using for that project. And then I'd also start to customize my entire timeline when it comes to the video tracks and the audio tracks. So I'd make my one for music and for sound effects and everything else. And then also maybe my four video tracks. Going further, I'd go to the Fairlight page and already add my EQs and my compressors and everything that I do there. So my project is ready to go and ready to be used. And this would take about four to five minutes every single time I would set up a project. But now I can just export this project and turn it into a project template. And to do this, I would just hit file, export project, and then I'd place it in the desired location. In this case, let me just place it on my desktop. And to use this project template, I just click on the DRP file to open it. This is going to automatically open DaVinci Resolve and create a new project for me. I can rename the project and then go into it and use it as I normally would. And this is not going to influence the original project file. So once I finish this project, I can save it, close it. And then next time when I do a similar project again, I can just open the same DRP file and it's going to create a new project for me containing all the same effects that I've applied earlier. So now that I have the project template set up, I save myself hours probably in a month not having to do EQs and all these little things every single time for a new project. So some of these tips are gonna be pretty big and some of them are gonna be really small and some of them are gonna be really random, but in the end, they have all saved me hours of time. And this is one of those small ones that is just really nice to know. And if you don't, you've probably been wasting some time. And what I'm talking about is doing J or L cuts. Now, in the past, you may have selected each individual clip, right clicked and unlink the audio and video. That way you can independently move the handles of the audio and the video. And then afterwards, you'd have to relink those medias. Now, this is the slowest way. One step up is to just uncheck this linked button right at the top of your timeline. But an even faster way is if you hold Alt or Option and then drag and click your handles, you can independently control the handles of the video and audio and make your J and L cuts by just holding Alt. No linking or relinking required a lot faster. Having to add a new clip or a new piece of A-roll in the middle of a timeline has always been a bit of a nuisance, but not with this simple shortcut. In the past, you may have done something similar to this. You'd zoom out of your timeline and select everything on the right side, making sure you grab everything. You're accidentally gonna move over your timeline. That's okay, you're gonna zoom back in, drag it over, and then you're gonna place your new clip right in the middle. Once that's done, you're gonna again select everything and drag it over to the left, making sure that you grab everything. But often stuff gets missed or they get moved around. So this was not the optimal way. The faster way to do this is to actually use the shortcut Alt Y. This is gonna select everything to the right of your playhead and then you're able to move that to the right. But usually you're gonna have some audio tracks or some music that go over the entire length of the video. So to deselect those, you're just gonna hit control on them while everything else is still selected. Move everything over to the right place your new clip in the center of your timeline, and then again, you can just click Alt-Y and move everything back into place. This also works to select everything to the left. To do that, you're just gonna hit Alt-Control-Y and the same controls apply. 
All right, and now I wanna take a second to thank today's video sponsor, Submagic. But before you scroll past and go to the next tip, this is actually a tip in itself, so make sure you stick around. So Submagic is an AI software that takes your long form content and turns it into short form clips. And these often have the potential to go viral. So Submagic started as just a caption and B-roll generator, but they've gone far beyond that. Now you can simply take one of your old YouTube videos. You don't even need the file anymore. You can just take the YouTube URL, paste it in, and then Submagic is automatically gonna detect the most viral portions of your long form content. And it'll give you a little icon to show you the potential of virality that this video has. And from my experience, they've given me enterprise access to their software and the selections that the AI makes are actually quite good. They take either the funny parts or the interesting parts of my video and they cut it up for you. And then the system goes as far to add captions. You have the control over the captions. You can change captions, the style, the font, whatever, you name it. And then additionally, you can add sound effects. You can add automatic B-roll from Storyblocks. So within Submagic, you get automatic access to an entire library from Storyblocks, which is a huge subscription just to get in itself. And potentially one of my favorite favorite features is the generate hook titles feature. Now, generally on TikTok and Instagram, something that really helps you stand out is having a good hook right at the start of your video. That's pretty obvious, but having a text hook is also really important. So after they find a viral portion of your video, they then summarize it in a single sentence with maybe an emoji that stands out and puts it right at the start of your video to stop your viewers as they're doom scrolling Instagram or TikTok. So if you wanna save some extra time and take advantage of this powerful AI, the information is down below in the description or you'll see some of it right on the screen right here. Let's get back to the next tip. I edit all of my projects in 1080p and I do that because I do a lot of post-processing. So whether I'm speed wrapping or adding 3D text or doing stuff inside of Fusion or just having some visual effects that just require a bit more computing power, I like to work in a 1080p timeline and then right at the end, I'll switch it up to 4K. Now that in itself is maybe a hack for you. If you're not doing that, you probably should because editing in 1080p is gonna be a lot faster than 4K. But the issue started happening is when I was switching from 1080p to 4K, my computer would sometimes fail. It would either freeze or it would get really slow uh, and it would just take a long time to actually reset or get back into the 4K timeline. But that's when I figured out how to bypass this problem. As you can see here, I have a pretty heavy timeline. I've got some speed ramping going on, some effects, some stuff in Fusion, and a lot of audio work. And when I switch this from 1080p to 4K, my computer often freezes or it just slows down for a little, making my working time slower. Now to bypass this issue, what I do before I switch it to a 4K timeline is I go to the top right and I click this little icon and this turns off all of your fusion effects and your color grading. This just makes the timeline a lot lighter and easier to process. I also go into my playback and I turn off the render cache just for a second. Then I go into my timeline settings and now switch it up to 4K. And as you can see, you get instant playback and no lag. Now, if you want, you can turn on your render cache again, and of course, turn on your color grading and effects, and then you can head to the delivery page. And now that we're on the delivery page, we might as well talk about the next tip. And it's gonna seem a little bit backwards at the start, but I promise you, it's probably gonna save you time in the future. So what I'm talking about is having rendering issues. If you're waiting for your computer to render, and then you see the final project, and there's a black screen, or there's some glitching going on, or it just completely freezes mid-render and crashes the program, that is obviously taking up a ton of your time and those are just problems that I just can't run into over and over again. To fix render issues and lag, you're actually gonna slow down the speed of your render. So you're gonna go into file, go to render speed and change it from maximum to either 100 or 75%. I know this sounds backwards, but I promise you if you have heavy timelines, this is always gonna save your computer from crashing or from DaVinci Resolve lagging and not rendering the project properly. And now your computer is not using max power and it has reserved to make sure that the project is rendered properly. Now, I've got a little bit of a confession to make, and please don't tell anyone because it's a little bit embarrassing, but I was the guy that would download individual assets every single time for all of my projects. Obviously, the better move is to start organizing your assets appropriately. And that takes us into the next tip of power bins. So I'm gonna talk about sound effects specifically, but this also works for overlays or different types of effects, whatever you might name it. Power bins are just DaVinci Resolve bins that are transferable between projects. So if you create a power bin, it's gonna be openable in every single 
single project on your computer. So for example, for sound effects, I would just drag in all my sound effects into the power bin section, and then it's gonna keep my organization that I have already built for my sound effects. Obviously having your power bin set up and organized is already gonna save you time, but I was still running into an extra step that I didn't need to be doing. So every time I was looking for a sound effect, I would have to navigate the folder system through sound effects and then the grouping and then find the sound effect that I desired. But instead, you can actually go up to the search icon right here, drop it down, and you can select search across all folders. Now, after you've used your sound effects for a while, you'll start to realize what their naming is. So if I was looking for a whoosh, I could just type in whoosh and then drag it down onto my timeline without having to navigate any folders. And now that you have these power bins set up and you're already saving some time, let's go ahead and save some more time. In the past, to add a single sound effect to my DaVinci Resolve project, this is what that process would look like. I would go to my downloads, grab my sound effect, drag it into my Windows folder that I have organized. Then I would go into that Windows folder, drag my sound effect into DaVinci Resolve into the appropriate folder, and then I'd be able to use my sound effect. But instead, your process should look like this. You should take your downloaded file, drag it into your computer's folder, and then inside of DaVinci Resolve, select all the folders, right click and hit automatically resync media files. This way, anytime you add a new sound effect to these bins, it'll automatically show up inside of DaVinci Resolve without you having to do that extra step. So I hope that these tips in this video were unique to you and that they're new and that you actually learned something. I don't wanna just repeat something that another YouTuber has already told you. So I hope that you really found something valuable in this video. And again, if you know different ways to save time, drop it in the comments down below and I'm gonna pin what I think is the best way to save time in DaVinci Resolve. Again, I have a ton of tutorials on DaVinci Resolve on some high-end workflows and some cool effects that you can do. Go check them out. And thanks again to Submagic for sponsoring this video. I'll see you guys at the next one.